Thank you for joining us tonight at 10. I'm Sarah Horbakowitz and Simone Thomas joins us now. We are finally starting to see those fall temperatures and starting to see those orange and reds on the trees too. Yeah, you know, this weekend we're starting to see some of that peak foliage across central Arkansas. So a lot of people that are headed out to soak up some of the sunlight we got today or even soak in those nice fall like temperatures took in some beautiful sights. That'll be the trend for tomorrow as well. So I do encourage y'all to go outside, take a look at the nice fall fall colors, maybe even snap a picture to send your friends here at THB 11. But as we continue through the evening tonight, we're looking to maintain partly cloudy skies, at least through the first half of the evening. As we get closer towards those morning hours, we'll start to see some of that cloud cover break up. Overall temperatures looking to get to the lower 40s overnight. I have a check in on your full forecast coming up later on in the show. Pine Bluff police are asking for your help tonight. Finding a man connected to a murder. Daryl Bell is wanted for killing Cedric Hawkins. Hawkins was found dead on East 26th Avenue back on November 1st. Bell, who police say goes by DP, is about 5'8 and 170 pounds. According to police, his last known address was on Boston Drive. Anyone with information is asked to call Pine Bluff police. Fort Smith police say that Baptist Health Fort Smith is all clear after a possible threat caused a lockdown this morning. Multiple people were alerted through a text about a possible armed intruder. Officers confirmed they did not find any threats and the hospital was released from lockdown. Police tell us the original calls came from workers inside of the hospital of quote a man with a gun. After a sweep of the building, no threats or person with a weapon were found. Police looked at video surveillance and did not locate any suspect with a gun either. Police say they will continue to investigate. Deer season has begun, but Arkansas Game and Fish is saying to keep an eye out for a mountain lion if you're out hunting. It was first spotted in Clark County. There have been about 20 sightings of mountain lions in Arkansas in the last 10 to 15 years. Game and Fish say there is nothing to be afraid of, but if you do come across it, there are things you can do to stay safe. If you're making noise, you're walking through the woods, whatever, uh, they're, they're going to go in the other direction. If you do see one, um, you don't want to run. You just want to back away uh, slowly and uh, get away from them. It is illegal to kill a mountain lion unless it's under self-defense. So if you see the lion and get a picture, you can send it straight to Arkansas Game and Fish. Today, lawmakers met in North Little Rock to talk about University of Arkansas Pine Bluff and the issues surrounding the 1890 land grant. A report from the U.S. Department of Education said Arkansas was one of 16 states that has been underfunding historically black land grant universities like UAPB. Today's meeting was to bring awareness to the issue and answer questions that people may have had. If we're looking at our Kansans and the economy and moving Arkansas forward, the way we're going to do that is through HBCUs as well as other institutions. So we want to make sure that we are addressing education. The Biden administration issued letters to the governors of those 16 states showing a $12 billion disparity between land grant HBCUs and non HBCU land grant schools. Hutchinson returned to Arkansas yesterday, going to the state capitol to file paperwork to be the next president of the United States. He's among six Republicans and four Democrats on the Super Tuesday ballot so far. Throughout his campaign, he has criticized former President Donald Trump. We asked him if he has any sympathy when it comes to all of the court cases that Trump faces. Well, he brought much of this on himself through his own conduct. Now, I disagree with some of the cases, the New York case, for example, that should have never been brought. In fact, the Justice Department itself in the review, the Durham report, found that the Justice Department had been politicized. So that is very legitimate. It doesn't mean that every case and every fact that he's being held accountable for uh, has its roots in, in uh, politicization. Uh, and so they all have to stand on their own. Hutchinson went on to say that he believes in reforming the FBI and federal law enforcement. To hear the rest of this interview, we have it right now on our website at THV11.com.
A key talking point for candidates in the upcoming election, how the U.S. should handle the conflict in Gaza. Arab and Islamic leaders held a summit calling for a ceasefire. Israel, meantime, has agreed to a short humanitarian pause each day to allow civilians to evacuate. Bradley Blackburn has the latest on the war in the Middle East. Palestinians are making the perilous journey south. They have a four-hour daily window where Israel has agreed to a humanitarian pause. To the near-constant bombardment of Gaza, hospitals in northern Gaza are operating without power, nearing a breaking point. Patients have been told they need to evacuate. Israel says they've agreed to help the most vulnerable out of Al-Shifa, Gaza's biggest hospital. The staff of the Shifa hospital has requested that tomorrow we will help the babies in the pediatric department to get to a safer hospital. We will provide the assistance needed. Arab and Islamic leaders say it's not enough. At a summit in Saudi Arabia over the conflict, they called for an immediate ceasefire. Israel has said that would not happen until all hostages are released. Worldwide pressure continues to mount, from the streets of London to crowds outside President Joe Biden's Delaware home. We, we know what terrorism means in France, but I think there is no justification precisely to attack civilians. Israel has said there will be no ceasefire until all hostages are released. Late Saturday, a rally was held in Tel Aviv, demanding their safe return. Christian Benavides, CBS News. Celebrations were held across the country and here at home this Veterans Day as people honor those who served and are currently serving in our military. One of the biggest events in Central Arkansas was over at War Memorial Stadium and veterans who spoke with THV 11's Jalissa Garza say it was the perfect place to celebrate. In 1947, they began production and construction on this stadium. War Memorial is a stadium full of history, history tied to our nation's military. That's the reason you see the name behind me. It is just that. It is a living, breathing memorial for all ages, for future generations. And inside, you might have noticed bricks with names on them. Forever, there will be bricks that people can see as they're coming in and out of the stadium. They can stop and reflect on those names that they see before them. Several major sporting events take place here, but Saturday, Arkansans gathered to celebrate Veterans Day through the first ever Corvettes and Veterans event. A number of veterans own these cars, own these Corvettes. It's always good to, make, to, to see someone happy, and uh, we get a lot of smiles. A smile could be seen on Gregory Nichols. I was in the Army National Guard, was employed up for a desert storm in 91. I was in a unit that brought cell phones to the market. Nichols happy to celebrate other veterans, especially those close to his heart. My son, he's a veteran as well, and uh, he also has a car and it shows a Grand National, so we want to come out to support him and all the other veterans. He and other veterans are thankful to see the support from our Kansans. And we just ask that they continue supporting us in every way. We feel good knowing that the community and people in general that come up and thank us for our service. It really means a lot. More than anything, Nichols says the holiday for him means freedom. We get an opportunity to experience so many things at one time, but freedom is the most thing. In Little Rock, Jalissa Garza, THV 11 News. Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders visited Rogers yesterday, honoring the men and women who have served. She joined the Founders Classical Academy for their Veterans Day celebration. And while there, she spoke with students and explained what the holiday means to her. As governor, I try to take any chance that I can to thank our veterans, not just today and not just this week, but as much as we can every day and throughout the year. Their service and sacrifice is why we are all able to enjoy our life as free Americans. 